Souls player here as well. We're gonna come into game number two, where we find Ken Yukihiro up a game. And as you can see, uh, Ken's playing Jund Food. It's Is It Phoenix on the other side? So much more towards the mid range here, Paul, for this matchup for, for both players. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, you know, when, when a lot of people started testing, this is probably the matchup that most people are familiar with, right? These are both not, they're not new decks. These are decks that we've seen in the meta for quite some time. And um, it, it's it's been interesting to also see kind of the the modifications that the Is It Phoenix deck has had to make with the kind of banning of Brainstorm, right? It's mm -hmm. it still got so it still has so much power that and it's so consistent. There's still so many ways to draw cards that this deck is still a very strong uh, option to play. And I think the big thing, the big card is the Dragon's Rage Channeler. Dragon Rage Channeler it has just basically made it so that this deck is again one of the top tier options in the format. It just does everything that you want. I mean, it's a one mana, effectively, it's a one mana 3-3 three, three flyer that lets you surveil for every spell that you cast. And that's, that's so right. powerful when you're already looking to fill up your graveyard with cards. You want to make sure you get Delirium for those Unholy Heats in your deck. And of course, anytime you put an Arc, uh, anytime you put an Arc like Phoenix into your graveyard, you feel like you're getting away with something. Yeah, it's almost like, you know, with Brainstorm, the deck was kind of on easy mode. It was just like, really? This deck gets this tool? And now it's gone. It's like, well, you got to earn it now. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But it certainly is capable of doing so. And, and for those of you unfamiliar with, with Kyle Rose, um, he's he's likely on that short list of basically one of the best current limited players in the world. As you know, he's a streamer and that's what he mostly focuses on. Admittedly, I watch a lot of Kyle's streams in You're preparation. You're a big Ham TV fan? I, I'm a big, big Ham TV fan. And I, bas I basically just watched a ton of his streams to help prepare for the limited portion of the world championship. Yeah, so I, I, he, he has a big voice in the limited community for sure. You know, he, you, when the ham speaks up, you listen. Yeah. He yeah. knows his stuff. He's one of those players though. That's it's tough. Cause he's so good that he can make weird niche strategies work that, you know, Normal players like me <laughs> can't, <laughs> and uh, he's he's on that level. Yep. But don't get it twisted; he knows how to play constructed too. He just uh, he's just a limited fan. Yeah, I mean, he he was on kind of that short list, borderline Hall of Fame. Even if you kind of just look at his resume, he's got four top finishes. They were all a very long time ago, but mm -hmm. he's got four top finishes. He has four Pro Tour top eights to his name. So. Uh, uh, he's definitely no slouch. Yeah, he's resurrected his name uh, as a streamer, and now he's got a chance, you know, with this qualification here as a challenger to to run it up in this tournament and put himself really right back on the map as far as one of the better players out there. I, you know, all the old school players have a lot of respect for his game. Yeah, absolutely. But of course, he is going up against one of the best here. Yeah, that's right. Ken Yukihiro... Uh, Doing his thing, shall we say. As we see him put Corvold Faker's King onto the battlefield. And this is going to be a question that really needs an answer. And if it goes unanswered, as we've seen, it ends the game really, really quickly. You see that Clothis God of Destiny apply applying passive pressure as well. And uh, Kyle Rose really has all he can handle here at this point. Yeah. Kyle does have an answer to Corvold here. The Ether in Gust the, there? In, in the Ether Gust that he has in the hand, so he can get that off the battlefield. Um, it, it is kind of awkward. He does have to kind of try to find a way to play around an active Soul Guide Lantern, right? So you have to be kind of mindful of what you put into your yard and but you also have to put enough into your yard to make it so that your opponent actually does need to go ahead and sacrifice the Soul Guide Lantern. Um, oftentimes, uh, an arc like Phoenix will, will get it done. So there's the, the Gust. The interesting thing here is Ken, I mean, he's only on three lands and he's got that Clothis. So uh, with no lands in hand, he can't currently recast that Corvold. Interesting. And, you know, it's going to go to the top of the library if that's where it goes. And that, of course, would preclude him from drawing a land. Does he actually want it back? So so Ken might... 
one consideration, he didn't go for it, would be to just sack the Soul Guide Lantern to try to find a land, right? Because mm. if you sack the Soul Guide Lantern, you draw a card with Corvold in play. Right, of course. But you're right, he didn't go for it. Yeah. Now we see the Clothis trigger go on the stack, and there's plenty to choose from there. And it looks like he's going to go for a land. This is an attempt to get Delirium undeliriumed. But uh, there's still another land in the yard, so it won't happen quite yet. Yeah, and now Ken probably just going to play out some of the cheaper cards that he has here. He can go uh, Goose, Trail of Crumb, Squirrel, or he can choose the Sack of Food to try to find actual lands. All right, well, he's going to go Goose, Squirrel, Trail. And look at that. Spell Pierce is going to come out here and nail that Trail of Crumb. So that's a win for Kyle. And perhaps could strand that Corvold in hand for future turns. Yeah, and Kyle, knowing that there's Corvold, likely going to use this removal spell, get that Goose off the battlefield. And now, I mean... Kyle's got a little bit of pressure here, you know, yeah, he uh, if he can find another threat to play, he might be able to get in for enough damage before the Corvold becomes too big of a threat. Yeah, Ken just needs to find some lands. Yeah, that's why in that previous turn... Well, no, he got Spell Pierce anyways. All right, smash for three here for Kyle. And Ken down could to 15 choose... goes Ken. Yeah, Ken could choose to shrink it down to a 1-1, one, one, but still just choosing to be patient here with the Soul Guide Lantern. Kyle continues to fill his graveyard up. Oh, there's Arclight Phoenix. Okay. And Kyle's at the point, you know, he can just kind of play everything out of his hand and they're just hard cast ox, right? Just a yeah. five mana, four, two, draw three cards. And once again, Ken is trying with this Clothis to manage Delirium the best that he can. There are actually two cards that care about Delirium here. There's one in hand that he doesn't know about, the Unholy Heat. But he's not yeah. gonna. <clears throat> he's only gonna be able to take him down to three. So delirium is gone, but it's precarious here. Right. Doesn't need a whole lot to happen to uh, turn delirium back on again. Any creature in his graveyard will do so. Yeah, and this the, the, these last couple of turns have just felt so clunky here for Ken. I mean, Clothis is extremely powerful, but Ken's not putting on a whole lot of pressure. He's playing. He's got a squirrel in play, but it really hasn't been able to grow. And it looks like Kyle just wants to put something on the stack here, so he's going to fire the Unholy Heat at that squirrel. Oh, and uh, keeps an iteration on top. Yeah, that that's just too many that's just too many cards, right? Like <laughs> Kyle's like I just I need to get that going. Yeah, because if you can just find a land, he can just cast a phoenix and just start putting pressure that way as well. Right. Ken Yuka Hero is, I mean, he's still two lands away from casting this Corvold. He just has not hit his land drops. It's kind of incredible. Boy, this feels like a very winnable game for either player, right? Like, Ken's got the table set, right? He has Clothis, he has Trail, he's got some foods. He's ready to rumble. And with that Corvold in hand, too, but he just can't quite get over the hump on actually getting things onto the battlefield. Wow, did was there no land there for Kyle off of his iteration? Yeah, no land, so he's not going to be able to put an extra threat here onto the battlefield this turn. But of wow. course, I mean, casting two iterations and casting a bunch of spells means he's he's ahead on cards. Oh, that was big. There's an Ether Gust. Wow, yeah, I mean, he just oh, cast and... two iterations and a Faithless Looting in the same turn with that Chandler. I mean, this is. Yeah, and this is going to... Sick value. Yeah, and this is probably... This is going to force the Soul Guy Lantern at this point. 
because I mean, not only do we have a three three channeler, but we also have a, a a phoenix that's going to go off. Right. The phoenix was definitely the tipping point. Now the lantern doing its job. The whole entire graveyard goes down. That means that the channeler's back down on the ground. But it looks like it is going to still be able to get in the red zone here, Paul, because, geez, Kyle's using up every little bit of mana this turn. Iteration, iteration, faithless looting, unholy heat, go. Oh, geez. <laughs> Second Corval, not, not what we wanted here from Ken. Yikes. And now Boy, we're just He's gonna... really leaning on this Clothis, though, and it's doing work. Yeah, he's going to dig with Trail of Crumbs now. Oh, no. no. This is brutal. Oh, no. Where are his lands at? Yeah, this is so rough. And now we Kyle can just go this and then play out the ox. Oh, look at this. He's actually going to just use the ether gust on the clothes here. This is one of the few ways to get it off the battlefield, even temporarily. Yeah, it's like, I know you need land. I know you have that Corvold still. What do you want to do here? That's right. Okay. But Ken says, you know what? You're not applying enough pressure. And this Clothis is so good in this matchup. I am just going to cast it again and say go. I'm at 20. All right. It's Ox time. There's a big hitter. Ox puts an Arc Light Phoenix in the yard as well. He draws another one. Now he's going to play Consider. Yeah, Two so triggers per. He needs a Sorcery <laughs> into his graveyard to get Delirium here. Okay. Let's see if he can hit one just by... Nope. Doesn't look like Let's it. Put it at three. But now his hand is double Crackling Drake Arclight Arc Phoenix, okay. and he already has six power. Finally, a land! Yeah, so now it's Corval time, and then Ken, and then Kyle, at least for the time being, will not have an answer here. Now it looks like Ken's just going to okay. run out the squirrel. Passes the turn back over, and he is barely hanging on here. But he's still at 20. And there's Crackling Drake number <laughs> one here for a 22 <laughs> 4. Is it really? It's what? a 22 4. Uh, yeah, because it tracks exiled cards too, doesn't it? Yeah. Whoa, it's just lethal. Uh, so, I mean, we're going to see probably a Corvold on Chump Lock Duty here next turn. I assume it'll trade, right? Yeah. Unless Kyle can somehow find... Oh, <laughs> uh, that, and that's that's Crackling Drake number three there, too. Boy, Kyle Rose is laying it on thick here. He's got a lot of value flying over towards Ken. Yeah, and I don't know if there is a way for Ken to turn this squirrel into a 3-3. Three, three. You can sack a food. Mm -hmm. You have a tower in play, but you don't have any other creatures to sacrifice. Right. He does sacrifice the food. Yeah. Okay. Not sure if the... Uh, yeah, I mean, everything just seems a little too slow, right? It, there's it just does. So there's just so much pressure at this point with the Drake in play. You just need to find an answer to that Drake. Because ideally, you don't want to just be chump blocking here with the Corvold. Probably want to take the creature just for the sake of delirium. Yeah, because he's got big problems, right? Okay, you have to not get hit by the Drake. That's a prerequisite. But if those Dragon Rage Chandlers get turned on, that's 10 damage coming in just from those. You can trade off with all the Drakes you want, but you're just going to die to the other creatures. Yeah. He's eyeing the land, but he did draw a land for this turn. Yeah, he hit a forest. So he can just play the forest and play Corvold. Of course, the 
Arclight Phoenix is always a tempting target as well if you, if you can't take your opponent off of Delirium or set them back significantly. Okay, so he does want the mana here. He wants the mana, so... It's that time. Okay. Wait. So I guess he wants is to Is Ken just trying to hit a fatal push here? Well, he can't... Well, if he's leaving up tower, he won't really be able to fatal push unless he sacks his Corvold. Okay. Well... All right. I mean, if he finds a gust here, right, he just, can find a gust to it. get rid of it. It's a second arc like Phoenix, which, boy, not good news here for Ken. The only good news is he has kept him off of delirium, so he's only taking six, rather than the ten. Oh. Well, there's a fatal push. Oh, okay. Yeah, Kyle. Real. I mean, a four drop was basically the worst possible thing here for Kyle. Kyle really wanted either a land or a removal mm. spell, right? Because if he finds a land, he can run out another crackling Drake this turn. Uh, but now, uh, Ken Yukuhiro found a Fatal Push, so he can go Corvold and then Fatal Push away this Crackling Drake. Huh. Getting interesting? Yeah. I mean, Kyle's hand is still pretty loaded here. It is. He's got three four drops in hand to follow this all up with. But we have seen... Corvold turn around some pretty unlikely games in our day. Oh. Especially if he gets to untap. Oh, it's unholy heat, but it's currently on three for delirium. Pillar of flame. Wait, can okay. he just cast both of them? So unholy heat is two damage. Ugh, so, so is, is pillar. pillar. Oh, so close. Yeah, you can go. Oh, but you can go for pillar. Does that does that does that do it? I think pillar of flame puts the fourth card type into the yard. So you go pillar face, unholy heat, the cloth, uh, the- uh, The Corvold. The, the Corvold, and that should get it off the battlefield. And yep. then you get in for 10, putting him down to three. And and also the, also the two damage here from the pillar. So this is down to one. Yeah, that's right. Down to one because of the pillar of flame as well, so. Kyle Rose, <laughs> maximum pressure, and we're in like sweeper territory that Ken doesn't seem to have here. Boy, that cloth has kept him alive for a long time, but ultimately Kyle wow. Rose gets the job done here in game number two. He's gonna force game three between these two. What a, what a slug, again, just an absolute resource fight as both players were really Able to do what they were trying to do. Ken slowed down a lot by his mana situation, make no doubt about it. But he was, you know, he had Clothis, he had Trail, like he was doing things. It was just more proactive there from Kyle. And he got the job done. Yeah. And, you know, the, the, the real notable thing in this matchup is just Kyle opting to play the three copies of Crackling Drake. You see all kinds of different variations in the types of creatures you play outside mm. of the Dragon Raid Channeler and the Arclight Phoenix. Some people play Sprite Dragons, some people play Stormwing Entities, but really here, you saw what Crackling Drake can do, right? It, you know, this is this is a matchup where uh, you're playing against a mid-range deck that's trying to grind you out. It also has Graveyard Hate, right? And Crackling Drake just does a fantastic job of playing around Graveyard Hate because it counts exiled cards. Yeah, and it works great against the grind you out plan, as you mentioned too, just getting you a two for one once it hits the battlefield. And boy, it was a freaking 23 power creature. I mean, it's yeah. it's not the kind of thing you can ignore. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, good start here for Ken though. He has a goose, it does get sniped, but he follows up with Trail of Crumbs and he's already got two food on the battlefield as well. And if you look, he's got the cat, no oven just yet and a few lands, but uh, he's got some good potential here. What about for Kyle, is his hand good? It's a little slow, right? He doesn't have any of the card draw effects. Okay, well, consider is a is a kind of way channeler. to get w w way to get it started. But yeah, it's basically like every hand, right? Chandler yep. is just just does so. Uh, uh, Faithless looting would be phenomenal here, right? You have the two Arclight Phoenixes, so you're very close to kind of getting that online. But right now, Ken's got to be feeling okay. There's no pressure here, no channeler. And you have Trail of Crumbs going, and 
you're being given the time to go through those uh go through those food tokens to kind of find your corbel find your win conditions got a removal spell now in fatal push gonna run out soul guide lantern though take out the only card in the yard does he want to cycle this one? He has a redundant one in hand. Yeah, the answer is no. Really and Marshall, smart. I'm just going to continue going with uh, old cards that people might not know. I think Kyle Rose is just going to start putting some snare thopters into play. <laughs> uh... <laughs> wow. Does seem to be the case. Couldn't... Yeah, yeah, there it, it goes. It, four mana, three, two, flying haste. Great limited card. Kyle, yeah, Kyle yeah. would put that in his draft deck. Now we know why Kyle picked this for his constructed deck. <laughs> they let me run four snare thoughts. I'm in. Wow, that's some action off of this trail of crumbs. He sacrificed to food back up to 21 life. All right, he decides to go for the goose. Yeah, I think uh, with, with the double Soul Guide Lanterns, he's kind of got the graveyard locked up. And the way that he lost previously was just not enough mana, right? And you do have yep. that Trail of Crumbs, so you really do want to get to your win condition soon. So, Goose makes sense. Yeah, and we've seen what an engine this can be, right? You know, Goose plus Trail is the type of thing that can absolutely power you through the mid to late game and keep your hand stocked up with action. And that goose is going to require an answer. I mean, it, it 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 might not look like much. You know, a lot of times when you draw your mana creature on turn five, turn six, it, it's not really the most important thing. But the, the food production from it is really amazing with trail out there. Ooh, Ooh there's some business okay. too. A card we haven't seen, Mayhem Devil. Not on the battlefield yet in, in the last game. But as we know, that card also is a must answer. So there's a lot of pressure coming now from Ken. But I have to say... Double three, two, flying haste. You can hard cast them, and they do get in. And as far as life totals go, Ken's is starting to fall. He's down below 20 again, and after sacking a couple of food. Yeah, he's bringing the beats. However, Ken does have the clean answer to both. He can choose to sacrifice his Fabled Passage and then run out the double Fatal Pushes. But he, of course, also has the Mayhem Devil. So with the Mayhem Devil, if you sack the Fabled Passage, that's, that's at least one point of damage. Yep. He'll be interested in doing as much of this on Kyle's turn as possible. You know, the worst case is when you, you kill a Phoenix on your turn and then they just get them both back anyway. But it looks like he's got some other action to deploy here. So he's going to have to kind of walk the line. He wants to use and have access to the mana here from the Fabled Passage. So, all right, fine. I'll kill one of them. Maybe even send the other one down. But you know, he knows he's going to leave himself vulnerable here to getting them back from well, the yard unless he's willing to sack this, the Soul this, Guide Lantern. This is kind of a, uh, uh, a cute thing that you can do. You can go Fatal Push on the uh, one of the three twos. Then you can sack the Soul Guide Lantern. The, Re the Mayhem Devil trigger will happen first. You can kill the other Arclay Phoenix, and then the, the Soul Guide Lantern resolves, and okay. you exile both uh, exile the entire graveyard. That And that's... that's also, just a decent thing to do, given that you have the other Soul Guide Lantern in your hand. Right, and this that is really the key here, right? Is Ken has to use these Soul Guide Lanterns judiciously, but with the, <laughs> with even... the backup, he can he can afford to fire off to get rid of these two I, I, Phoenixes. I, 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 like, I like that he's trying to go one extra level of fancy by holding prior. He could have just cast that Fatal Push first, but uh, yes. doing it <laughs> while it's on the stack. <laughs> oh, Ken, he's a showman. There's no doubt about it. But uh, this is interesting spot because Kyle's probably thinking, okay, all right, you got my two Phoenixes off the battlefield, but at least I got rid of that Soul is Guide that, Lantern. Is that all four? Yeah, it that's, is. Uh, that's every that's single copy. That's normally what you want to see, but the two right. of them are gone. Boy, Faithless Looting one time, says Kyle. Oh, wow, yeah. Just that the once? Eh, he finds a consider. Still still can still can find it here. He can. He really just wants to get these. Oh, oh, oh it's a oh, faithless oh. looting. Hello, friend. That's the one he wanted to see. Get these arc-like pieces in the yard and back onto the battlefield. 
but Ken does have the ability to handle some of this pressure. Still, that couldn't have gone better for Kyle. I, and you have, if you're on Ken's side, you're like, okay, I killed two of the Phoenixes. What's right. the chances he's got the other two, right? Exactly. No kidding. Oh, man. The good news for Ken is that he still has the other Soul Guide Lantern and a Fatal Push, so he can handle one of them ostensibly. But uh, <laughs> it's well, he a can do, bit of he work can, to do. He can do the exact same thing here. So he makes a food here end of turn, right? Mm -hmm. And then he can sack the food for the one damage. Soul Guide Lantern deals the other damage, and then you have a Fatal Push. So it's right? the same exact sequence. It's the same exact sequence, and you have successfully dealt with all four copies of Arclight Phoenix. Also curious to see if Kyle is willing to use Unholy Heat to kill the goose or if he feels that he needs to try to get it up to Delirium to take care of this devil. Yeah, he's going to let the goose stay alive. And there's a squirrel too. He can just throw that out there and, and get a little extra pressure going as well. I like Ken's position here, Paul. Yeah, I mean, he's going to be able to get both of the phoenixes here. And then it's really going to just be that crackling Drake that Ken's going to have to deal with here after everything is said and done. Yeah. And let's not forget the Trail of Crumbs gets to keep doing its thing throughout these interactions as well as we see a food token sacrificed. And assuming there's enough mana floating around for Ken, which there seems to easily Ooh. be, he can do this. You know, instead of drawing a land, now he's got a Corvold in his hand. This stuff adds up really quickly. And this yeah. is on a draw where Kyle's been able to get all four Phoenixes into play. <laughs> right. I think Ken is probably going to be mindful of Aethergust here and just, just try to cast all of his cheap spells and get the Arclay Phoenixes off the board first. So in lieu of casting Corvold, is that what you're... In, exactly. Instead okay. of casting the Corvold, I think maybe just want to go ahead and and run out the Soul Guide Lantern and just kind of do the, a similar thing here. Um, the graveyard is not as big of a problem, right? Once you deal with all four Arclight Phoenix. Yeah. So um, yeah. it's delirium management at that point, which is still important, right. but you can wait on that. Yeah, it really does feel risky to, to play Corvold. Like if you get these other two Phoenixes gone, they're all gone and you've got to feel, uh, what's the worst thing that can happen, right? I, you know, I, it feels like Crackling Drake's on the list of, you know, that at this point, and that's just not that bad for you. All right, he's going to have the, the cat enter the battlefield as well. That'll bump him up to 13. Hmm. Mm. Sacrifice the cat with the squirrel, which will kill he left the Phoenix that had taken a... one. Okay, and then he left up a red mana. Yeah, not a black. Ooh, another Mayhem Devil. Well, he's going to take a middle ground okay. route here, Paul, yep. because this initial trigger here from the Soul Guide Lantern will take out the Phoenix and leave Kyle with one. It's it's kind of the middle play, but it got him a little bit of extra value, and it, the Squirrel is starting to become a problem and probably a pretty big threat. Yeah, I think Ken really wants Kyle to use that Aether Gust on one of the two creatures that he has in play so that he can safely deploy the Corvold in his hand. Yeah, really smart from Ken, you know, putting Kyle on Aether Gust here and being willing to tempt him. And it's not going to work at least this turn. But again, you know, the line that Ken has taken here, yeah, it's the middle ground. He's going to take a little bit of damage here, but not that much. He's actually in a pretty good position still. And there goes the Crackling Drake on the stack. It's an 8-4. Not as good as the one we saw last last game, but not too bad. Yeah, and you know, Ken holding on to that Fatal Push, this could be a nod to Crackling Drake, right? Mm. He could just be thinking, well, I have a Mayhem Devil with this Squirrel in play. I have ways to just kill an Arclight Phoenix by just sacrificing my permanence if I want. But sacrificing enough permanence to deal four damage is a pretty tall order, right? So yeah. maybe I just want to use my squirrel to get the Phoenix off the battlefield and use this fatal push for one of the three crackling drakes that you have in your deck. Land off the top here for Yukihiro. And he's going to test the waters. He's going to fire off another mayhem devil. And you know, this is getting to be a position here for Kyle where it's I think you might... a hard place, right? Like yeah. if he lets this resolve, he may just die. 
Yeah. Or lose you, his whole board. Yeah, you basically just have to go for that gust here. It's just so much damage here. And likely if that second Mayhem Devil resolves, I mean, you can just kill the Crackling Drake if you sack a Soul Guide and, I guess, sack a Mayhem Devil or something. Mm-hmm. Now, Ken does need to do something about this Crackling Drake here. And he has options. He, he's got the Squirrel, or he can just sacrifice the Lantern to, to get a card, and then he can use Fatal Push to kill it. Yeah. And Kyle has that that Spell Pierce, uh, which is also mm. something to look at. So just... Uh... <laughs> If that's relevant, it's really bad for Ken. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> like, something bad happened. Right, because, well, as is, Ken can play play around it. He's got, he does have access to the three mana, and it does that's look right. like... He doesn't Ken... have another permanent not... sack. Right, he's not seen another reasonable sacrifice avenue here. So he's going to fire off the Fatal Push. He does have the two mana left over for, for Spell Pierce, as, as Paul mentioned. So, And he's going to get in for, for seven here, too. Mm. And the one from the Mayhem Devil. So this is... Kyle's got one more turn here. Yeah, it's a two-turn clock. And he's out of threats. Just a Spell Pierce in hand with 3-2 Flying Arclight Phoenix in play. What, is, what does he need? Like an ox, maybe? Ox would nope. be excellent. He finds Spire Bluff Canal, however. And that's going to do it for Ken Yukihiro. He picks up game number one. Then as we joined, Kyle ground him out in game two. But it was game three for Ken.